Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. We are back in Mist for some more adventures. Uh, last time we came back from Channel Wood with the red and blue pages. We also found uh, half of a, a note that we couldn't read because it was torn up and lengthwise. And there was also a message from uh, Cirrus to Akinar, I'm pretty sure, uh, basically saying, quote, he is preparing, remember to take only one page, I think is roughly what he said. Uh, and so now let's do let's first return the red pages and the blue pages and then we'll go to uh, stone ship cool all right and I think we click them to put them in the books so let's go ahead and do this one first Okay, all right, so that's Cirrus, and this must be Akinar then. Uh, some of you folks have pointed this out in the comments on the other videos. Uh, yeah, the fact that they're 3D rendered sort of tends to take a little of the of the life out of them when they were FMVs in live action. I mean, I remember Akinar particularly being pretty unhinged, and you can kind of hear from the voice acting, but, eh, you know, it's fine. It sort of fits with the, the... Wait a minute. There was another book on here. I thought it was just the four... Okay. Okay. So remember when we went into the fireplace the first time, there's this panel that comes down and you can put in a pattern. So my guess is at some point we're going to find out which pattern to put in there. And uh, we'll go from there. In the meantime, let's read the stone ship age and then get the pirate ship up out of the water. And we'll go from there. All right. Emmett was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were, a group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of a large sea. This was where Emmett lived. He enjoyed his life. Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks as it was never too far of a distance. One day, another person appeared on the rocks for no apparent reason to Emmett. Emmett named this new person Branch. 
Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live, also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their world, and the water was always dazzlingly clear, allowing them to see almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them. Though the sun always shone, it was never too hot for the boys. A light breeze always came from the north and cooled the area down. One day, while Branch was swimming and having fun in the water, he noticed another boy swimming. Branch brought the new boy to Emmett to find out what to call the new boy. Emmett said the boy should be called Will. Will was soon a part of the group, and all three of the boys swam and enjoyed their perfect world. At least that is a story I was told when I arrived today on the island. Emmett, Branch, and Will were surprised to see me at first, but even before the night ended, we were all becoming good friends. Today, the second day on this newly created age, a strange thing happened. It was not strange to me, but the three boys did not understand what was happening. While I was relaxing under a large tree on one of the smaller rock islands, it began to rain. It was a nice rain that lasted for about an hour in the morning. I explained to the boys that the rain was not harmful, yet they obviously still feared it. Before going to sleep tonight, I told the boys I would leave the following day. I told them that while I was gone, I would make a surprising change in their world. They didn't understand, not that I expected them to. I still do not fully understand what happened today. I was experimenting with the art, testing the limits of the rules as dictated to me by father. I attempted to create a boat by writing it into the world. I thought everything was planned correctly, yet somehow the boat had become gripped by the rock and broken in half. Although this test did not turn out as I had hoped, I now oh, wait a minute. I now have answers to a few of the questions my father never answered. As for the boat, I can see the boys enjoy it anyway, and with that I am pleased. They have played on it all day. Even though the boat cannot move, I have enjoyed studying from it. It is a much sturdier platform than the jagged rocks. In the course of my observations, I have learned some very interesting things regarding the solar system of this age. Merciful lamp. Two feet, okay. The nights are absolutely beautiful here. I have made note of and named a number of constellations that pass above me. Also during the night, I catch glimmers of light from the horizon which I have not been able to discover if it is created by some natural phenomenon or by additional people on far off islands or rocks. I should very much like to discover which. I rather suspect it is additional people which would explain the appearance of Branch and Will. The rain today was slightly heavier than usual. Just when the boys were getting used to the light rains, a small storm arrived. They were frightened of the heavier rain, not to mention the thunder and lightning. If rain has never fallen here until recently, as the boys tell me, I would like to discover why it is falling now. Regardless, I have decided to return home for a short while. I have also been thinking of some plans for a lighthouse that I hope to construct soon. I think that perhaps by shining a bright light toward the horizon, I might prove my suspicion regarding additional inhabitants. They would be curious about the light and travel to discover its source, if they have the means. I return with many tools that I will need for construction of the lighthouse. I have decided that once the lighthouse is completed, I will leave for some time and let the world's own imagination have control. We have worked three weeks on a lighthouse now and are making great progress. The rock that we are building on seems to not be as secure as I would like. I have had to alter my plans slightly, but those alterations pose no problem. Okay, so that's the lighthouse and that's the, like, the top cupola of it. The boys are quite strong and have been helping me immensely. I estimate construction will be done within two days. The lighthouse is finished and we are all proud of our creation. The boys are amazed at the structure wrought from rock with their own hands. That evening we powered up the generator, much the boys dread at first, and shined a great light to the horizon for many hours. I stayed the night in the top of the lighthouse, and in the morning awoke to observe the sunrise without my being coated with the chilly blanket of ocean dew I had become accustomed to. It was Will who first saw the girl. She was swimming not far from the boat where Will was getting ready to hunt for fish. Then Will noticed a man not far away from the girl. Emmett was very pleased to meet the additional neighbors. I feel pleased to leave this age. I have set in motion events that have nothing to do with writing or the art that will have a more profound impact on this world than I could ever have written. I think. Okay, and so this is the... So this is the ship... I'm guessing this is the lighthouse, because that sort of matches the drawing. 
kind of looks like power lines, right? Because the generator. I don't know what this is, but that I'm guessing that might be like a like a telescope because that's a tripod. I have no idea what that is, but that's like a little shed somewhere. Bird's eye view. Okay. Ah, okay. I think of the uh, of it this age as a gift to myself that I will wrap up and open someday in the future, only to discover that it has changed so much that indeed it is a surprise. Besides, I have yet another new age that awaits me. It seems I'm going to need some way to travel underwater in this new age, and so much planning is in order. It has been ten years since I left this age, which I have since called the Stone Ship Age. Upon returning, I cannot believe the changes that have taken place. The original three boys have grown into adults, and there are many new faces that I do not recognize. Branch told me that it has not rained for seven years, and the cool breezes are back again. They are all very content and have been serving me with new foods and showing me new materials they have discovered. It even seems they have found gold somewhere. I see it in many forms around the island. My lighthouse has been kept in perfect condition and it looks as if they have tried their very best to keep it so, yet I have noted that the entire rock it was built on has sunk approximately 40 to 50 centimeters. After a wonderful visit with my old friends, I wonder aloud with them what things will be like here in another 10 years. And then these are the constellations. Wait, no, 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 no. I am wondering, we'll get to the tower in a second. So, right, this is a little diorama of the ship. We need to raise the ship. And then, this one or something? Right, yeah, and it's an eye. And I'm pretty sure there's a constellation for the eye in this book. Yeah, there it is. So my guess is... Let's rotate the tower to get to the ship. There we are. My guess is we are going to use... Remember there's the planetarium on, like, over that direction? So we are going to go into this tower. The key, the co... Like, the, um... The clue is going to be a bunch of dates, I'm going to guess, because then, remember, there's the machine in the planetarium where you can enter the date and the time of the year, etc. We will enter those, okay? We will find the constellations. We'll get the constellations onto the pillars, and then the ship rises out of the water. Here we go. All right, hold on. Let me just write these down. October 11th, 1984, 10.04 a.m. January 17th, 12.07 546 a.m. November 23rd 9791657 p.m. Okay, and now just to be sure that we are in fact looking at the ship and I see the mast already coming up. Okay, cool. So, I that's my hunch. And I'm pretty sure it's pretty straightforward, but yeah, okay. Uh, close the door. Go on down. And let's go to the planetarium. I'm still, like, irrationally stoked that I can walk around in this place. I mean, obviously clicking through in the original mist was, was fine, but just the idea of being able to walk around in this place is great. Also, um, while we're on our way here, uh, for those of you who are new or, or can't remember, uh, that book suggests... You know what, let's do this first. Let's do October. Yes, here we go. October the 11th. Nope, 11th. At, okay, so 1984. 1984. At 10.04 a.m. While this is going on, let's actually close the door. I forgot to turn out the lights. Ooh, here we go. And let's just copy down the pattern, because then I think we take this, we go back to the book, we look up the constellation, and there we go. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is January 17th. Well... Seven at five forty-six. Nope. Get back. 
five. Forty-six. I'm actually not sure how you would do this in VR. It feels a little cumbersome, but okay. Okay, let's just draw that one out. I'm going to guess this one's a snake. And if only because, for those of you who do a little stargazing here and there, uh, especially in the east, uh, in the eastern, um, eastern, in the northern hemisphere, northeast is where I am in, in the United States, but in the northern hemisphere, this is this reminds me a little bit of Draco, the way this is kind of laid out. Um, okay, so let's go and grab the final one, which is November twenty third. Here, uh, nine. This is gonna be a doozy. Nine, seven, nine, one at six fifty-seven p.m., which is eighteen. Right, fifty-seven. Okay, draw that one out. Okay. All right, let's go back to the book. So, yeah, so in the journal that we read, first off, that journal is clearly predates the one from Channelwood because there's no mention of Catherine or, or Cirrus or Akinar, who you would think he would want to introduce to the boys because he wants his children to enjoy the world, and, and there are play pals there. Um, also, the discussion of the art and... Wait, no, I'm here for the book. Oh, well, there you go. Snake. That is, in fact, the second symbol. Let's go. Okay, the third symbol is the beetle. No, no. Ah, okay. And so it's leaf. So it's leaf, snake, beetle. Cool. Uh, and then the art is, I mean, basically writing these worlds into existence. But apparently it's not like it... I mean, the journal is Atris journal so he doesn't have full control because otherwise how would he not know for example is there a way to tell what is in here the bird okay i get it you can barely make it out so i apologize if youtube doesn't fully render this but All right that's the cross that is a leaf perfect okay so that's one that is an arrow That is an anchor, right? Because otherwise, how would he not know that is... That looks like the beetle, so we'll come back there. I don't know if we have to order put these in order. That's the snake, just out of curiosity. Right, this was the eye. Okay. So that's the snake, and this one's the beetle. Ha 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 ha! And there goes the ship. All right, let's go to the ship itself. Now that it's up. Um... Yeah, so he, he writes the worlds into existence, but he doesn't have full control. The imagination of the world can still steer it. Because otherwise, how would he not know, for example, that there were people other than, like, Will Branch and Emmett who were on the world, right? He would know, in theory, because he wrote it, but if, not, but if the world has self-determination, then... then that's, that, that's, what the, uh, that's what the mystery is for him. And that's cool. The problem is, Channelwood was totally deserted, and it still had people on it in the in the journal. So my question is, what happened to everybody? And I'm guessing this one's also deserted. Okay, so this is the map. This is the back of the ship. This is the front of the ship, the lighthouse, the power lines. There's the little pathway, yeah. Yeah, there's the pathway up where I'm guessing is the telescope. Flooded... Blooded. Blooded. Oh, remember the story? Emmett and Branch found whole, you know, caves on the island where they lived. In the main rock, so here it is. We got the lighthouse. And I actually like this too. So remember, the in, to the question of how much time has passed. The light, the rock the lighthouse was on had sunk when Atrus came back. And now it's just completely underwater. My guess is, and flooded... And they have to bust out this window, so it's like it's been a while. 
Okay, no. There is a keyhole. Wait, what is this? Oh, it's a key. Can I... No? No. Alright, so whatever it is... Whatever, we'll come back there. Um, let's go take a look at what's at the top of the rock, i.e. the, uh, <laughs> what I'm guessing is the telescope. Bingo Bango Telescope. Well, that's cool. Uh, and that's the, I thought it was a shed or like a, another structure, but no, this looks like... A crow's nest with something else in it. Okay. Uh, can I... Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Let's just take a good look around, all the way around. Alright, you know what? This is a little metagaming, because, you know, the instinct is if they show you something, then you should be able to remember it or write it down. Okay, at 120 degrees, mast. At 135 degrees, the lighthouse. Okay. Anything else we should make note of? Oh, at 185 to 187 degrees, the other mast. Is there anything else around? There is one other option. I'll get there in a second. Hold on. Nothing here because we're passing through the mountain, right? Almost at 360. Back to where we started, more or less. And just when we hit, just when we hit 120 again, I'm just going to stop there. Okay. Fine. So then all that's left is we got to check out this place. But maybe, maybe, if we can get the lighthouse going again, because clearly, right, power lines, they wouldn't just put in for nothing. But if we can get it going again, we can go up to the telescope and maybe see if there's someone on the horizon blinking something. Maybe there's a message. Anything is possible. Uh... Okay. I know there's a selector switch, but let me just... Because that sounded very much like a pump. No. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's start right to left. No. 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 Maybe. It looks like there's water. Yes! Okay, there is a staircase going down. on the rope. Ah. Alright, but how? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Let's, let's close it. So now... So check this out, right? There was water in here, nothing happens. But if we reflood the lighthouse, the barrel is now empty, it floats up, this whole this whole construction is on a rope, it gets guided up by the rope, all the way up, and then the chest pops up through here. We use the key to open the chest. And I'm assuming in that chest may be the key for this, or... Well, it could be anything, really. It could be a note explaining things, but my guess is there's a key in there. <laughs> okay, so that's that. What else can we do? What happens when we... There we go. When we pump out the middle. Ooh. Now let's just double check this. It did reflood. Okay, so you can only pump one of them at a time, and the others reflood. Then let's go ahead and... There you go. There's the other key. Oh, get out of here. 
Okay, and it's connected to the chest, because then you can't, like... Okay. There we go. Nice. All right, let's see what's up here. There was mention of a generator, which means there it is. Okay. Whoops. Okay, let's just keep it going. Just a couple more turns for good luck. And the light's going. And the light's going. And is the... F yes, the lighthouse is on. Okay, we'll go down there in a second. So that there's light in there now. But I want to see. Does the telescope... I mean, is, do we pick something up? In the telescope? Not seeing anything. That's why we have this. Let's go ahead. Let's turn the other way around. Do a lazy turn for 360 degrees and just see if we can find something. And if we can't, we can't. Okay, well, the rock face we can probably skip a little faster, but okay. Yeah, see, by the way, nobody's here, right? There is no one, which means... Okay, that's the lighthouse. We've already seen it. Fine. Alright, so we've powered up the lighthouse. There's no one on the horizon. We have drained these tunnels, so let's just go ahead and take a walk down these tunnels. Something... no? These look like doors, right? It's not just me. <laughs> not just me playing a whole lot of bio... of, uh... Bioshock. There's a door. Let's not get distracted. Let's go all the way to the bottom here first. Okay. Mattress. Door. These almost remind me of Channel Wood a little bit. The the you know the style of the masks sort of matches the the pottery we saw. Color inks. What? What was that? Oh. Okay, so the generator does have a, a limited time. All right, fine. No bad. No, no problem. We'll go back and recharge it before we check the other corridor. Good to see these lights don't go out though, because it's a candle, obviously. Well, that suggests something I'm not comfortable with. If there are no people here, maybe this is a former inhabitant? Maybe this is Will, or Branch, or Emmett? Formerly? Okay, what's this? Hmm? Okay. Sure. Alright, can I use any of these? Any of these tools? No? A little hard to see, but you know what? Hold on, are these drawers? Yes. With maps, I can't easily read. They're more than... Yes! Perfect. Is there maps? Maps? More maps? And I'm assuming there's more over here. Oop! It's an Akinar page. No. Aha! The other half of the note. There's no way I'm reading it that way. Alright, let's just read it from here. Uh, the marker switch. Sure. The vault is locate. The island... I'm just going to write this down because I have the other half. And I think maybe at the end of this episode, I'll just... On screen, I'll line up the two halves. And we'll see what exactly... Uh, what it says, you know, for the both of us. Or for the, for the all of us to see. The vault is locate. The island of... Achieved very ease. I'm assuming it's easily. Instructions are full. Each of the marker. Let's have a marker switches. Turn every one on. Then, and as a final step, there to the. So let's just go ahead and. Okay. Alright, so that's the other half of the note. We'll read the full note when we have a moment, but let's, in the meantime, go back to the lighthouse. Let's recharge the batteries. 
door close. Remember, there's a door in the middle of the corridor, which we also have to check out at some point. But first, we need light. We need... We need power. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, there we go. Now, time to check out the other corridor. And then remember, there's also one more position on the pump that we have to figure out. First, let's go check out this one. And I'm gonna guess it's the other brother's room. It's, um... And we'll have the red page in there. Is there a corresponding door? Yes, there is. Nice. Okay, we'll go there in a second. Okay. Well, I will say, I, I like that they differentiate... Well, there we go. It's pretty straightforward. They differentiate the two brothers very clearly, right? One, and I'm guessing because the red page is here that it's Cirrus, uh, you know, is very opulent, right? All about money, all about... A poison dagger, all about subterfuge. And drugs, okay? A neat little toy. I think, I, if I remember correctly, these were just, like, things you could play with uh, in the game that because it's from 1993, we're just like a great way to show off the tech and what you can sort of see. So it was super cool. But like, right? It's super nice bed. Very, very lush upholstering. And then the other room, which I guess is Akinar's, is just like it's just a mattress with some, some ratty sheets. Right. Diamonds and rubies and okay. Money. Nothing. Okay, so some set dressing. All right, so we've got that. Let's go to here. And this is a compass. Oops. Okay, we gotta restart the power, but before we leave the room, okay? So this is a compass, right? And what, we ha what do we have? We have 120, the mast. We have 135 for the lighthouse. 185 to 187 for the other mast. So that that can't be it, right? I'm guessing we gotta... We gotta tell it a heading of some kind. Heading of some kind. Heading, heading, heading. Got some power cables coming out. Probably, and these are the underwater lights that we saw in the book. Well, of the things on this island, or in this age, that we have for, for compass headings, the most straightforward, the one we should try first, I think is Lighthouse. And I say this only for this reason. So check this out. North, east, south. So this is 90 degrees between this one, and this one. We're at 120, right? So, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. We're 10 degrees short, right? Because this would be 180. Instead, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But if we do this... Because this is southeast. This would actually be 135 degrees. Right? 45 degrees. One, two, three. Okay. Another one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, this would be 135, and there's no easy way of getting 120 on this thing. At least not straightforwardly, let's put it that way. Let's try a lighthouse first. Let's, let's restart the power. Let's go put in the lighthouse direction. It is a little brute forcey, I will admit, but and in lieu of something else, and the fact that this entire world just revolves around that lighthouse. Uh, it's a pretty safe assumption that we have to punch in the coordinates of the lighthouse. Again, it's a little metagaming, 
it's not exactly how I would prefer to do it, but again, we're also talking about a game that is a little bit of a product of its time. This is not, you know, in abduction for a ma for for example, there was a lot of explanation, there was a lot of description, a lot of sort of lore that you can find and get clues to what things were and how things worked. This is, you know, there are some limitations in here and that's fine. And so if you have to just try a bunch of random things, you have to try a bunch of random things. But in the meantime, we have a compass, we had a heading that we can get off a telescope, and that seems pretty straightforward to me. There we go. We turn on the lights just like that. Perfect. All right, I'm not gonna really touch that right now because I, you know, <laughs> I feel like we did what we had to do in there. And just messing with the set dressing is a little unnecessary. Okay, so we've done that. That's, that's, that is the, we've got the red page, the blue page, the second scrap of the note. And we still have one area left to D, uh, to, uh, pump out. And I'm guessing that that means this is going to be the way to leave this age. There we go. Okay. And look, the light is here, and the light is there, and they're illuminating... That's what the button. Is there anything else, though? Huh. Oh, it's a power cable. That's cool. And there's the book back to mist. Excellent. Well, before the light runs out on us... Let's head back. All right, so we're back here. I think we'll call it there for now. Uh, next time, we'll return the red and blue pages, and then we will go off to the, the Selenetic Age which I think is the spaceship, because the mechanical age is clearly the gears, right? So it's the spaceship. We'll go to the spaceship next, okay? Um, as promised, at the end of this, I will put up the note. Uh, I won't read it, obviously, because it requires a little photoshopping skills on my part to just put it up. Um, but you all can see it, and I will put the text of it in my comment on this video, just so that you don't have to... Uh, uh, well, no, you know what? I'm going to put the, the text of it in the comment to the next video just because no spoilers. And in any case, uh, we'll call it there. If you guys enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have uh, thoughts about the episode, thoughts about the game, think I missed something, think I should, could be doing something better, or think I'm doing something right, by all means, leave a comment. And in any case, I'll see you all next time. Better,